we'll have to wait to see how he, how he does. OK, I think we can uh, cross now to uh, look at the caption for uh, Cardiff Central, uh, look at the result uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, we saw Jenny uh, Randerson uh, acceptance speech a few moments ago. There's the result for you. Uh, 11,256 votes for Jenny. She'd be very pleased with that. Yeah, I think it's now becoming a very solid liberal seat. Um, and, uh, you know, she's obviously, um, if you go around the constituency, it was overwhelmingly, the poster campaign was ve overwhelming for Jenny Randerson. They couldn't find many Labour posters there. And uh, she's obviously indicated in the results. So it looks a good result and a safe seat for them now. And, of course, it's held by Labour in Westminster. That would be very interesting uh, dynamics at play there for another four years. Gareth, thanks uh, very much indeed. Well, so the first results of the night saw a resounding loss for Plaid. Isloin going back to Labour. And if predictions are right, Plaid's night won't get much better, with even party sources describing prospects as disastrous. The other big news... The turnout or lack of it, Allen and Deeside down to just 25%. Elsewhere hovering in the 30s, David Wigley says he fears a poor turnout could risk undermining the, legitim the legitimacy of the Assembly. Here's Lee Waters. The first casualty of the night came in Islowin as Plaid Cymru lost an AM and Labour won back the seat. Irene Mary James, the Labour Party, 11,246. <laughs> With a spectacular 15% swing to Labour, Irene James got a whopping 7,320 majority. Even with a 7% drop in turnout from last time, Labour reasserted its dominance in a seat that has traditionally been seen as one of its heartlands. It's a bad night for Plaid Cymru. This election was meant to see their breakthrough from the main party of opposition. But Plaid sources say the result is not so much bleak for the party, but disastrous. They're likely to lose their prize gains of Romva and Hinechi, where Helen Mary Jones is defending a majority of just 688. In Conoy too, where they're defending a majority of 114, they're preparing for the worst. It's very much a target seat, not only for Labour, but for the other political parties as well. Um, you know, we've fought our campaign, we've uh, had good support, we've reason to be confident, but it can all happen on the night, as it were. The party leader, Yayan Wynne Jones, is also in trouble in his own seat of Anis Moan. Tory Peter Rogers is said to be doing very well, but not well enough to take the seat. So Rodri Morgan is certain to be re-elected First Minister with an increased majority. What remains to be seen is the size of that majority, and whether it's enough for him to cast aside the Liberal Democrats and govern without a coalition in Cardiff Bay. Well, those results coming in thick and fast now. Let's cross to Giles Smith, who's in Haverford West. Giles, what's the picture with you? Uh, still counting here on the three uh, particular votes. We've had the official turnout at 43% for both the two seats. With me now is Christine Wither, who has been a very high-profile AM for the past four years, perhaps for some of the wrong reasons. But first of all, you're under a lot of pressure from Clyde in this seat. What's your, what are the vibes you're getting at the moment? Well, at the moment, it's a three-way split, and it's traditionally a, a three-way margin on this seat. And people seem to be retreating in, into their party camps, which is uh, certainly interesting as far as our campaigning's uh, being concerned. We're getting, Labour is getting support in areas we never have before. Um, and certainly the Conservative vote appears to be holding up. So it really is a three-way marginal. Um, at the moment, party workers have been verifying the ballot boxes and trying to make our own calculation of how it's going to go. Um, I think it's going to be very close, actually. Uh, my party workers have told me that we're going to win it, um, and their verification tells them that. But I do think it'll be close. And with a lower... Um, turnout than we had last last time. Yeah, I think that that was inevitable. The, the low turnout is, must be disappointing. It's a bit he higher here than it has been in some other areas, mm. but it must be very disappointing for people, Extre everybody in all parts. Extremely classes. disappointing. And um, what that's down to, I think, you know, th there will be several post mortems in each party camp. I'm sure after after this election, um, whether it's the fact that we haven't um, presented the assembly as well as we could have. Um, whether it's the institution as a whole or party politics as a whole what that people are disenchanted with, we just don't know. Personally, you've had a pretty torrid four years. It's almost a surprise to see you here again. Did you think about it again? Did you think about perhaps not bothering? 
I never considered not bothering. Um, yes, certainly part of my time in the Assembly has been torrid, but there have been some fantastic experiences for me. Um, just the, um, the fact of doing casework, making things happen for people, sorting people's problems out, it's an absolute dream job and um, it's one that I felt privileged to, to undertake over the past four years. Uh, and no, it never ever crossed my mind not to try again. So I'm really hoping for a good result uh, tonight and another four years of the same. <coughs> Christine Greta, thank you very much indeed. Thank uh, you. Uh, and others has been really good and there's a, a quite a strong swing from Plaid to Labour so on the Blyna Gwent result as well across the valley seats coming from east westwards we'll have to see what it looks like further mm. west it is early days you must say that. it is early days um, there have been calls for, for, for the for the assembly to, to have its powers extended would you would you like to see that and there's been talk tonight that it might even encourage people to, to vote that the turnout may uh, may improve. Well, let's see what the Richard Commission comes out with. But I think the real message from tonight is that nationalism is being rejected and that Labour's policies, which are very popular, free bus passes for pensions, student grants, free prescriptions for everybody if we get a clear majority, I think these are the policies that are popular. I think the other message is the Tories, although they haven't done too badly on some of the, the early results here in Wales, are in real trouble nationally with a leadership crisis, and Labour's in a very strong position, which is extraordinary in a second term, in mid, uh, second f uh, term of gov government uh, at a UK level, at a British level, and in mid-term, it's extraordinary to be doing so well. The campaign built very much around uh, Rodri Morgan. Do you think that was a, a good idea? Yes, I do, because I think Rodri is enormously popular highly respected and he was a fantastic asset to us uh, compared with the situation in 1999 when we had a very difficult position after the leadership squabble and the rest of it and I've sensed an incredible warmth for Labour on the streets of virtually every constituency, that I went to virtually every constituency across Wales and that was encouraging although the turnout is disappointing. You've been happy to sit back and, and let uh, Rodri run it have you? Well Rodri is the leader of the Welsh Labour Party in terms of this campaign if I'm Secretary of State for Wales at the general election, then, then I'll be leading it. So I've been delighted. We work very closely together. And I think that it puts us in a good position to really take Wales forward, to build a world-class Wales that is creating more employment, more, nearly 60,000 jobs created last year, the highest rate of job creation anywhere in Britain, highest rate of business startups anywhere in Britain. Now, when have people said this about Wales before? I think we're really in a position where Wales can start lifting off, although it's a tough international climate and uh, we're going to have to cope with that. Uh, do you think that, um, I mean, we're going to see the, the, the similar repeat of, of the swings right across Wales, do you think? I don't know. I mean, the messages I'm getting through my uh, pager <laughs> and, uh, as it were, through the grapevine are that in northwest Wales, uh, s the situation's very tight in some of the seats there we're either holding or hoping to get. And in Carmarthenshire, as Christine Gwither was implying, uh, it's pretty tight there. Uh, I'm hopeful we're going to win Clinechley, uh, as you were suggesting as well mm. earlier on, uh, Lee Waters. And uh, I think that should put us in a good position to be aiming towards a majority. But uh, whether we'll quite get it or not, the night is too young. What sort of administration do you think we're going to see if Roger does get this majority? What's going to be different about uh, this uh, four years? A confidence and a stability that you know where you are and you can take Wales forward to this goal of a world-class Wales and that uh, you can plan and you can work and you don't have to worry about whether your coalition partners are going to pull the rug on you at any time. Having said that, I mean the coalition with the Liberals was relatively stable uh, and uh, did produce good results. So uh, we're looking forward to an overall majority, but at the moment, I can't predict one. Of course, I think if, it's if too close to call. If Roger goes it alone, there'll be two cabinet uh, spaces to fill. Does he, does he have the resource, the talent base within the party? Well, he's not looking to me for a start. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Yes, I think there's great talent in, in the party. And some of the newer members uh, uh, coming in, a couple of the newer members are really ones to watch, I think. The ones I would single out, assuming she wins, is Tamsin... Uh, Dunwoody, I think she's very talented, uh, and Leighton Andrews in the Ronda, two of the most talented of the new intake coming in, and there's, there are other, other talented members of the, of the, of the Labour group as well. Peter Hayne, thank you very much. Thank you.
I think we can cross now to uh, Caerphilly and hear from the losing uh, Plaid candidate, Lindsay Whittle. He's with Matt Dix. Matt. Well, John, uh, Labour almost doubling their uh, majority here, and I'm joined now by uh, Plaid Cymru candidate, Lindsay Whittle, who came second. Uh, Mr Whittle, what exactly went wrong in the campaign? Well, quite simple. Not enough people voted for us. It's as simple as that. But uh, Plaid Cymru, uh, Caerphilly was uh, a key uh, seat for them. There was a targeted seat uh, with the Ron Davis departure. and There was uh, a lot of uh, commentators saying you might be able to take it. Well, clearly the commentators and the opinion polls are wrong. I have to say, whenever I um, canvassed and walked through the streets of Caerphilly, everyone was uh, telling me that we were definitely going to win, that all their friends and family and neighbours were voting for us. But I'm afraid they simply did not turn out and vote. It's as simple as that. So that's the main, I mean, uh, turnout uh, down by 6%. I mean, everyone thought that would affect the Labour vote, vote but it uh, seems to affect yours. The, their vote has dropped just slightly, and ours has dropped um, quite, quite dramatically, yes. And uh, there's no logical explanation for it, I'm afraid. Are you shocked by the result? I mean, were you confident beforehand? Oh, no, I wouldn't be shocked by, uh, by results. Don't forget, this is a Labour stronghold. It's, it's been Labour for generation after generation. There's a, an old saying that if you put a donkey up for Labour uh, in the valleys, uh, they'll get in. And um, we're trying to break that saying now, and we just didn't do it this time. It's as simple as that. Obviously, uh, this result and the result in Isloin as well, uh, Plaid Cymru not making the breakthrough in the valleys that they did in 1999, okay. doesn't look good uh, on a Wales-wide level. Well, we're still here and, and we're still you know, in second place in these constituencies and as, as I said in my uh, little speech, we're not going away, uh, we're, we're very much a political force in these valleys and if you look, you will see that the, the Labour Party is an old party and Plaid Cymru is the younger party. I mean, it has been said, uh, some commentators saying that uh, you, you've uh, run a very muted campaign up here, do you, th do you think that's had an Im impact on the vote at all? Well, we, all the workers for Plaid Cymru here have been local. Um, I don't think all the other parties can say that. Uh, they have definitely brought people in uh, from outside. Every single party has brought workers in from outside. But Cymru has relied on local strength here. But specifically, do you think you missed the boat and uh, elect? Uh, well, yes, impetus? we didn't win. We didn't win, and um, clearly the, the the electorates promised to support us just didn't materialise. Okay, thank you very much. And from Caerphilly, back to you in the studio. Matt, uh, thank you very much indeed, and I think we can now uh, join Giles Smith in Har Haverford West. A correction? No, I think we can join uh, Giles. Giles. Well, I hope you can, yes, because we've got a very special guest here, somebody who may well be making a bit of history later tonight if she is elected as an AM on the, on the regional West Wales, Sherry Short, who would Hello. become the first black ethnic community, how do you like to describe yourself, um, uh, AM? Well, black ethnic minority person would be fine. Yeah. How important, how significant do you think that would be? Oh, it would be a tremendous significance. I mean, it would reflect... I'm afraid we'll have to leave that and dive straight to Anis Morn, where there's some breaking news. The Green Party, Pimkant Anau, 509. John Marek, Independent Party, Daigant in Deganau, 219. Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales. I should explain this is uh, the regional with, with meal, list. Seat. 8,765. Not quite as exciting Dost as we thought. Dostoid, pro-life, 3 But important 3. nonetheless. A Plaid Llafir, the Labour Party, Chwemil, 3 6,342. Uh, any pointers, any clues there? Well, I think, obviously, if they voted the same way on the, um, on the first pass the post system, then Yen Wynne Jones will be in, because obviously um, 8,000 to 6,000, but whether they've done that in, in, in the first pass the post system mm. remains to be seen. But, um, interesting. The Marek Independent Party picked up 200 there, so he's hardly picking them up in the West. Somebody asked the question earlier whether he would. Well, he's picked 200 there. Maybe valuable at the end of the night. Gareth, uh, thanks very much. Well, let's uh, rejoin Giles, who was cut off uh, in full flow. Giles, apologies. No problem. Uh, Sherry Short is with me now, who could become, make a bit of history, would become the first black or ethnic minority at AM later today. You're explaining how significant you think that might be? I think it's tremendously significant. For a start, the Labour Party is pioneer um, this initiative, really, to ensure that there is a black and ethnic minority representation within um, the Assembly, which hasn't happened in any of the Assemblies. We haven't seen it in Scotland, we haven't seen it in Ireland, we haven't had it here in Wales. 
So it is a new phenomenon and it is making history. Some people would say perhaps it's tokenism. You've well, been put at the top of the list. We, yeah. have, we have to start somewhere and I have been in the party for over 25 years and I've worked. I don't think anybody could actually say it was tokenism on those um, grounds. And I think it's important as well that we are demonstrating that equality means equality it should be across the board and that it's an opening for other people too to become AMs, not just having one person. I think you're, you're right on that, but that it's an opening to have other people becoming AMs. There are other talents out there that the Labour Party and other parties can actually use. Very briefly, I haven't got any vibes on what's going on in the vote. What are your chances? Well, you know, I'm forever hopeful. I'm an optimist. And I think tonight is going very well for Labour, and I think this will continue. Sure, thought. Thanks for, thanks for well. joining us. We'll probably see the result later on. Now back to the studio in Cardiff. Charles, thank you very much. And let's go back to Caerphilly, where Matt Dix is with the winning candidate. Yes, John, we're expecting a, a close shave uh, here in Caerphilly, but I'm joined by uh, Jeff Cuthbert now. Um, you've almost uh, doubled your majority. You must be very pleased. We're pleased that we've uh, increased the majority, that's right, yes. Um, are, you, are you a bit disappointed at the turnout, though? Obviously, the turnout uh, has gone down in Caerphilly. Yes, we would have liked uh, a higher turnout. Um, I dare say there's a number of factors that uh, contributed to that. The weather didn't help, but also there's been something of a temptation to dumb down the Assembly recently, and I think that became a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's up to all political parties and all other organisations, like the media, to make sure that that doesn't happen again. I mean, many people were writing your chances off because uh, Ron Davis obviously was well known. You were the new uh, candidate to step in. Um, were you surprised at the margin of victory in the end? No, I don't think it came down to personalities at all. I think the, what this result shows is that the electorate of Philly have trust in the Labour Party to deliver the services that it needs. And that's what's happened tonight. And also the result in Islaw, and it's a massive swing back towards Labour in the Valleys. So I understand, and uh, I think that's the case. It shows that really the trust is there in Labour, and now Labour will have to deliver. Yeah, OK, so... Um, Labour and the trust is still in Labour. That's all we can say. Well, we'll have to leave uh, Jeff Cuthbert there because there's a declaration in Rodri Morgan's county in Cardiff West. We can see the podium there. Captain Beanie, the presiding officer has already begun. The result for Cardiff West constituency. Can Luniad, I for life, go through in Kyadi View? Eleanor Mary Bush, Clyde Cymru, the Party of Wales. 2,859. Heather Douglas, the Welsh Conservative candidate, 3,583. Jacqueline Ann Gasson, Welsh Liberal Democrats, 2,914. Frank Roger Wynne Hughes, UK Independence Party, 929. Howell Rodri Morgan, Labour, Laria, 10,420. Howell Rodri Morgan has been elected. Ethelwyd Howell Rodri Morgan. Thank you very much, everybody that took part in what was a very fair, clean, open and democratic contest in Cardiff West. Can I thank Stephanie King Davis, the, the returning officer, for her announcement? Can I thank all of the counters, the people who presided at all of the polling stations throughout Cardiff West for the way they have conducted themselves? And can I thank all of the other candidates as well for contributing to a good, clean, fair, democratic fight in Cardiff West between the five competing parties. Thank you all. Uh, this has been an unusual campaign for me uh, because I have spent less time in my constituency than ever before. Uh, when I won in 1987, 1992, 1997, 
as an MP and then in 1999 as an Assembly member, I was concentrating very hard on Cardiff West and just Cardiff West with the occasional visit to an adjoining constituency or two. This time, it's the first time that I've ever entered an election contest as the party leader in Wales and not just as the local assembly candidate. It has meant, therefore, that I have been more than unusually reliant on my team on the ground. OK, and let's go straight to Wrexham, where another result is imminent. Of course, John Marrick uh, hoping to hold his seat. 2,228. Susan Leslie Griffiths, 5,566. John Marrick, 6,539. Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. Thomas Philip Rippeth, 1,701. Peter Ryder, 1,329. And I declare that John Marrick has been duly elected to serve as Assembly Member for the Wrexham constituency. The number of ballot papers rejected and not counted was as follows. Voting for more than one candidate, 38. Unmarked or void for uncertainty, 54. There's the result uh, just confirmed. Uh, John Marrick holds Wrexham uh, with a majority of about 1,000. Gareth, what do you make of that? Well, I think it's a, a, a very good result for John Murray. I mean, see, he's taken on the party machine, and as uh, when they tell me, say he is an independent person, um, he thought he'd win it. He stood his ground and has won it. And I think um, you know, the Labour Party made a, a great mistake deselecting him. Clearly, the guy would have gone in four years' time, and perhaps they would have had him um, as their AM, and wouldn't have caused the problems now. Perhaps, if the majority for Rodri is just not over there, what do they do with John Murray? Mm. Perhaps Peter will tell us. Peter, yes. You, you <laughs> <laughs> Any answers? <laughs> well, I don't know about that situation, but I mean, John has been the MP or the AM for 20 years. He had a personal vote that all people in that situation would have. And so it's very disappointing, but not entirely surprising. I'll stop you, Peter, because John Marrick is actually speaking. John Marrick. First of all, thank my supporters and the people of Wrexham for electing me for a further four-year term as Assembly Member for Wrexham. It falls to me to thank all the staff, uh, from the returning officer downwards, that have counted this ballot. We thought we were going to be here at four or five o'clock, some of us. We're not. We're going to go home a lot earlier to the police and everybody for conducting uh, the election scrupulously and efficiently. I'd like to thank Janet Finch Saunders, the Conservative candidate, for a very fair, honest fight. I'd like to thank Tom Rippeth, Liberal Democrats, for a very fair fight, and also Peter Ryder. Um, I thank them all, and I hope that uh, they will do battle elsewhere and be successful. I will support any party proposal for the benefit of Wrexham or North Wales, from whichever party it comes from. My main duty will be to fight for Wrexham and North Wales to make sure that in the Assembly in Cardiff, Wrexham and North Wales get its share. I will fight to defend public services. We need a proper rail service. We need a first-class national health service. We need to cut waiting lists. We want to ensure that people from Wales don't have to wait longer than people from England. We need a proper education service. And I'm against any cuts or so-called modernization by one of the parties of the fire service. We need to protect our communities and our residences. But finally, I want to thank the Wrexham people for showing confidence in me. I consider it an honor to serve them for four more years as their assembly members. Member, thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to reiterate the thanks to the returning officer, the support staff here today. 
all the staff that worked in the polling station and the police. As a Democrat, I obviously accept the result and the decisions of the Wrexham people, and I do hope that John Marrick serves them well in the next four years. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my wonderful agent, Anne Wynne, and my loyal campaign team who have worked so tirelessly, and to thank my family and friends for their continued loving support. Thank you very much. Well, I too would like to thank my agent and my team for a really good campaign, and I would like to formally congratulate John Marrick. John, okay, let's get a word on that Wrexham result from our panel and Joe Keenan. Joe. Yeah, let's go straight to uh, Labour's Don Tuig. Uh, not a surprise, you thought that Leslie Rivers might just be able to pull it off in Wrexham, but didn't happen. No, uh, the people of Wrexham have made their decision. They've elected a turncoat in John Marrick. A turncoat? He's going to be in the Assembly. You might actually need him if Rodri only gets to 29 or 30 seats. John Marrick has not served the people of Wrexham well, in my view, and uh, I think they will see that in the coming years. It's a disappointing result for Labour. We put up a tremendous campaign, but there we are. The, we must accept the democratic But you decision. must accept he might be necessary to help you along the way uh, if Rodri's on the ba tip of balance there. I think that Rodri Morgan will do a good job in leading the Assembly, leading Wales for the next four years. Let me turn to you, uh, Jonathan Evans. Uh, not particularly about the Wrexham result, but the Tory vote generally does seem to be creeping up. You're not making huge advances, but it's steady, steady. In every election that I've looked at so far, the Conservative share of the vote has actually increased. Uh, and I think that in some uh, particular constituencies, it's increased quite significantly. Uh, and I think that, therefore, looking at the regional lists, if the regional lists reflect this, uh, I would anticipate that the Conservative gains perhaps three or four additional seats. The other thing is that the Plaid vote is falling down so much that although I think we went into this campaign not anticipating challenging Plaid's position as the second party in Wales, I don't think that there's going to be that much of a gap between the well, Conservatives and Plaid I Cymru. I have to get a response well, from, let me, uh, from Let me make Simon my point before, before Simon <laughs> has the chance to respond to it. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what the gap's going to be, but it's going to be much, much closer than it was last time. That's quite clear. Do you accept that, Simon? I, I think the gap will still be quite uh, significant. I mean, the Tories were the third party when we came into this election and they will be the third party when we come out of it and there's only uh, one party that will be the main <coughs> opposition there's no doubt uh, about that in the National Assembly and, and that will be Plaid Cymru but uh, I have to say that I've been looking at all the results as well and it's quite true that the Plaid Cymru vote is down why, in all the results that why I've seen so far. Um, I don't know to be honest and, uh, uh, and uh, you know at about uh, half past two in the morning trying to work out uh, exactly why this has happened. Mm -hmm. Um, you never expected it to be a substantial. No, we no, we so. no, we didn't, and and it's it's also true to say that it's not in line with our own polling, nor the polls that were published. Um, and I think that's what's uh, interesting about uh, this election. The the campaign may have been as dull as ditch water, but the results are actually turning out to be rather fascinating because we are seeing uh, some t some conservative uh, increases. Uh, and I think what's happened is that there's a sense of those who have come out to vote, and of course the the numbers down, and that's a disappointment in us in, in itself. But those who have come out to vote, who feel in some way disillusioned with the Assembly, um, particularly perhaps with the, the, the running of it or, or, well, or just the institution they're itself. It out on Plaid well, they seem actually the to be. They, they do seem to be saying, well, in, instead of the natural choice, well, not natural choice, but the semi natural choice that might be, well, at least Plaid are offering a very different alternative to the Assembly. Let's vote as a protest in this way, which is what they did perhaps four years ago. They seem rather to be spreading their votes, you know, sometimes doing very well for Liberal Democrats, sometimes for the Conservatives, certainly not coming to us. And it's, it seems a little bit blaming us for the process of devolution, which of course was not our choice of devolution I whatsoever. Want, I want to go to... that we held in uh, Montgomeryshire and Cardiff Central. Cardiff Central particularly was a very, very good result for us. And also Mick Bates, who's done so much for Montgomeryshire. But could I just pay tribute to Glenn Davis, really, who has fought off a very, very serious illness and uh, has obviously done very well in his uh, election in Montgomeryshire. OK, gentlemen, we'll talk some more um, shortly. Uh, back to uh, Jonathan there, though. Joe, thanks very much indeed. Let's go straight over to Andy Collinson at the Aberavon Count. Andy. Yes, Jonathan, a couple of votes uh, brought in the last couple of minutes. The speech is happening behind me at the moment for Neath, where Gwenda Thomas, the Labour candidate, has romped home, getting um, 11,332 votes. That's getting on for twice applied to vote in that constituency of Neath of 6,386. 
course, that had supposed to be applied, hoped for, a couple of weeks ago. We've also had a substantial majority for Labour in Aberavon. Um, we've got results here for Brian Gibbons of 11,137 against Plaid, the runner-up, of 3,324. I've got Brian Gibbons with... Um, a good result for you, congratulations on that. Um, but the turnout, very, very low. The turnout was low, a little bit better than people were initially suspecting, but uh, I have to say it is a disappointing. And uh, I think that one of the big challenges for all politicians is to try and engage people more effectively with the political process. I don't think this is a problem just for the Assembly, but it's the way we do politics, I think, is at issue as well. You're the person in the seat for the last few years. You're the person who's been taking the wages for the last four years. How do you improve the Act? Well, I think that from our point of view as a Labour Party, the electorate here in Aberavon has given us a resounding uh, uh, vote of confidence. Our majority has gone up the proportion of the vote has gone up. So I think that the electorate are happy with the job that we're doing, but I fully concede the point that one of the big challenges for the Assembly in the next four years will be to work towards greater involvement and to get a greater hearts and minds uh, with the electorate here in Wales. So how do you actually interest the electors? Because I have to tell you, I've walked around the constituency this afternoon and this evening, said to you, do you know who your AM is? Have you been out voting? An awful lot of people have not gone out to vote. An awful lot of people say, Brian who? Yes, well, I mean, I would accept that. I mean, I think that we've got to accept that if only uh, just over one third of the electorate vote, then clearly, you know, there is an issue. I'm not trying to deny that. But I think as well, I have been pleased that the number of people who have recognised what the Labour Party has been doing in the Aberavon area, working to protect the steel industry, giving us the new energy park at uh, Baglin, the, the Clandarcy urban village, uh, work to improve the situation in the Upper Avon Valley with the communities first. And these are all important important issues uh, for the people of Aberavon. I think that what we're going to find over the next few years is that these programmes which we've just started are actually going to deliver and I think that as these programmes actually start delivering that people will see that the Assembly does make a real difference to their lives in Wales. Brian Gibbons, cross fingers uh, for more turnout in the future. Now Thank back you. to you in the studio. Andy, thanks. Let's go straight to Cardiff uh, Central where Nick Partridge is with the winner, thanks, Jenny much. Randerson. Nick. And thank you. Yes, as you say, Jenny Randerson, the winning uh, candidate in, here in Cardiff Central, is with me. You must be very pleased, obviously. Absolutely delighted. I, I was immensely proud four years ago to win the centre of our capital city in the very first assembly. And this time we've really cemented our position because I've uh, more than doubled my majority and in percentage terms it's gone up considerably. And uh, my aim, which was to turn it into a so-called safe Liberal Democrat seat is, uh, is something which is very close to my heart. I'm sorry, we've got some uh, list results going on in the background, yes. so I hope everyone can still hear. Um, obviously, you're, you're safe and home, but what about other Liberal Democrats? Well, I'm, I'm very much in a cocoon here on my own. Um, I don't know how we're doing elsewhere, but the, the signs that come in is that it's been a reasonably good night for the Liberal Democrats. And what do you think it says about the coalition with Labour? Well, I think that the predictions that many made, especially in the media, that it would harm us as a party uh, to be in a partnership with the Labour Party have been proved entirely wrong. Uh, people know all about me, they know all about the government and the record of the government. They've judged me and they have given me a resounding thumbs up. Because it looks as though Labour may not need your uh, cooperation this time. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, uh, being in government is interesting, challenging and very rewarding. Uh, but there are things that are really very rewarding about opposition as well. And I think that the key thing I have to do is to be a good constituency assembly member. My constituents are my first priority and uh, positions in government or in opposition are not the thing that's on my mind this evening. Jenny Randerson, thank you very much. Thank you. And now, back to you, Jonathan. Nick, thanks very much. I gather a declaration in the Ronda is uh, imminent, but in the meantime, uh, let's talk to uh, Gareth. Results coming thick and fast now. This is the rush hour that people talk about. Where are we? What's the, what's the, what's the story of the well, evening so far? Well, I think it's obviously the story is that Labour are going to have the largest number of seats in the Assembly. But the question is, will he have, how mm. many will he have across that 30? Because 
although ply their losing seats in the constituencies, they're likely to keep the seats in the list system. So, you know, the, the overall balance of the assembly may yet be, you know, not too distant from what we had before. You had 28 before, they may have 30 now. Of course, they've lost Wrexham with Marek there. Mm. Uh, Marek will be, have to be counted as part of the opposition, unless we see a new coalition coming out with Marek as part of that with Labour. But um, we, we, we'll see. But I, I don't think it's going to to be too different from what we predicted on that 30. And, and what about uh, Yian Wynne Jones? Well, I think if there was anyone else that could challenge him for the leadership of the, his party, then that challenge would be put in because I think he's had a disastrous um, set of results. Um, we still don't know yet what's happened in Yanis Moon, whether mm. he's the, um, the... But I think looking at the list system there, he probably is safe there. But uh, I think there will be serious questions about the campaign mm. and the organisation. I think we can see some pictures coming in now of the candidates lining up uh, in the Ronda, that uh, declaration uh, imminent. They're being photographed for the local newspapers What I'm going to do, just so everyone's clear, is we're going to make the declaration the returning first officer in English in full, just explaining and then in Welsh the in procedural full, matters. And then we'll congratulate the successful candidate. Okay. Okay, and... Uh, everyone ready? We're ready. Okay. Get on with it. I, the undersigned, being the returning officer at the election of a member to serve in the National Assembly for wa of Wales for the Rhondda constituency held on the 1st of May 2003, do hereby give notice of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Andrews, Leighton Russell, the Labour Party candidate, 14,000 170 votes. Davis, Geraint Rees, Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales, 6,216 votes. Gregory, Geoffrey, Independent, 909 votes. Rajan, Kunatha, United Kingdom Independence Party, 524 votes. Watkins, Veronica, Kathleen, Welsh Liberal Democrats, 680 votes. Williams, Paul James, Welsh Conservative Party, 504 votes. I do hereby declare that the said Leighton Russell Andrews is duly elected as Assembly Member for the said constituency. Roi fi sy'n llawnodi isod sy'n fwyswyddo canlyniadau yn yr etholiad de gynhaliwyd ar y cyntaf o fai dwy fil a thri well, there we have uh, the result. Wow. Well, not unexpected. Let me see. Tony Blair. Tony Blair came into Wales for 45 minutes <laughs> and he spent it in the run there. Now that says it all, I think, doesn't Time it? Time well spent. <laughs> Absolutely. Great campaigner. And uh, we can see the figures there. Majority of, well, nearly 8,000. Yes, this must be a great disappointment to Clyde Cymru because the last time they were really crowing about the Ronda, yes. you know, it was a real feather in their cap. Now they've, you know, they have really, really lost it. And of course they still control the Ronda Cunnantaf uh, Council. Now, you know, this bodes very badly for them for council elections next year. Um, but a very excellent result for the Labour Party there. But they've campaigned really hard. They wanted to win that seat. If any other seat in Wales was to go, but that's the one that they wanted to win, and that's why Tony Blair went there, I think. Have Plaid Cymru been caught sleeping here? Or? Well, I think they've concentrated too much on policy and not on campaigning. I think that they've actually lost the plot. There's no differential debate. You know, they had this big debate about whether they were going for independence or not. Those are not the kind of issues that people want to hear debated. OK, let's hear from... Today, uh, the Ronda Valleys the have come home to Labour. Yeah! And with a majority that exceeds our expectations. This result is a tribute to a campaigning Labour Party, a progressive Labour Party, a Labour Party that believes in the community socialism that has marked these valleys. Have you, my come the Ronda, wedi dod and all e laver. Dimond in gwir 
Plaid Cymru Sydd, a Blaid Laver Adi Gwir Blaid Cymru. There is only one real party of Wales. Today, the Labour Party has demonstrated across the South Wales valleys that only Labour can claim to be the real party of Wales. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Returning Officer, and all your staff for the hard work that they have put in today. Um, sometimes we see the voting system as quite complicated and been new, uh, there's been a new system of postal votes and I think they've coped with that and we all candidates, I'm sure, appreciate their hard work. I'd also well, like to thank my opponent. Possibly one of the in rising stars of, of, of the next administration. Campaign, I think. Yes, I think he's so one of the brightest of the new. be one of the assistant ministers and but he certainly is a very ambitious politician and is one that's likely to um, want to won't be happy to be in the back benches for too long how important have postal votes postal votes been in, in this labor victory do you think oh I think it's been crucial I'm gonna say the Labour Party have really got their machine into gear about postal votes now I think the tragedy is for Plaid Cymru is that they haven't really got to grips with it and if they don't get to grips with it they'll lose more more elections because as we look at turnout has been very very low as we've seen in this election then more increasingly um, we are going to look for new methods of, of, of getting the voters to cast their vote and the postal vote is obviously the future and any political party that ignores that will do it at their peril and I think Plaid Cymru are suffering this time because they have ignored it. How important is money in all this the funding of the parties because we know Plaid Cymru have got financial problems Yes, I, I think it's always obviously um, quite a crucial thing, but I think one of the things that Plaid should have realised is they've had money for researchers, um, they've had money because they won last time, and they haven't exploited that advantage, and I think they, they're suffering because of it. They've actually put too much resources into the Assembly itself and too little into the constituencies to make sure that those constituencies have a party machine and they start winning those uh, votes back. OK, let's uh, hear from the losing Plaid Cymru candidate. Excellent job, and I know they've worked very hard, 15 hours in the booths, and also the work they've done this evening. I'd like to also thank my team. We've had a, a very good campaign. I'd like to ask my, thank my family, my agent, Rebecca Winter, my coordinator, Nigel Bevan, and all the people who've worked with us. We've had a wonderful campaign. It's always a pleasure uh, campaigning in the Ronda and meeting Ronda people, uh, because I want to thank also the people of Ronda for choosing me as their uh, assembly member four years ago. It was a tremendous privilege because they are the finest people in the world and I'm very proud to have represented them as the first assembly member. <laughs> Having said that, I, not, I must... Uh, any more. Let's go to Rob Shelley now in Wrexham. Rob. Thanks, Jonathan, yes. And I'm here with, unfortunately, the losing candidate, Leslie Griffiths, who lost by just under a 1,000 votes. Um, and John Marrick, when he was actually giving his speech out there, he gave name checks to everyone, in fact, every candidate apart from you. I think it just shows appalling bad manners. My mother was in the hall tonight. I wouldn't have dared do that. How do you feel having, having lost this seat by just under a 1,000 votes? You know, a month's hard work and now this. Well, I'm obviously very disappointed. Uh, as you say, it's been a month's hard work, but it's only been a month that I've been able to um, get my name known to the, to the Wrexham electorate. The Labour Party members in Wrexham have worked very hard for 20 years promoting John Marrick and have had four weeks to promote me. It's been a pretty acrimonious fight there, has it? Has that detracted from what you've really tried to say on the doorstep? No, I don't think so. I certainly haven't had any smears and lies in my campaign. We fought a very clean campaign, and I think the electorate were starting to, to realise that. I'm obviously very disappointed with the low turnout. I think that did affect us, and historically, Labour voters stay at home. Now, you're a devoted member of the Welsh Labour Party. Just how much of a hurt is this result to the Welsh Labour Party? I don't think it reflects on the Welsh pa Labour Party. It doesn't reflect on Roger Morgan. It certainly doesn't reflect on, on the Assembly. I think it's a, a local thing. As I say, John Marrick is a very recognisable name. And I think, um, yes, it hurts, of course, but, you know, Wrexham Labour Party members are very betrayed by John Marrick. Now, what we've seen is some pretty deep, pretty open divisions, pretty deep wounds here. 
how can these start to be mended? Because people just aren't talking. You aren't talking to him, he isn't talking to you. Well, obviously, um, bridges will have to be built. As I said, I hope John Marrick works very, very hard for the people of Wrexham in the next four years. And, and I mean, what, what happens to Labour in Wrexham now? Because this was always a safe Labour seat. I mean, the last time it was threatened was 20 years ago when the, the Lib, um, Social Democrat Alliance almost won it. 20 years. Well, several Wrexham members have uh, spoken to me today about you know what would happen if it went one way or the other. And I think we've all learned a lot. As I said, the campaign team were fantastic. Uh, they worked tirelessly. And I'm sure we'll regroup and, and get on with it. And finally, I mean, very low turnout. That hasn't helped. Is it the fault of the Assembly? Is it the fault of you as the candidate? What's the problem here? Why did 70% almost of Wrexham's people not bother to go to the ballot box? I think um, there is a, the perception of a north-south divide in Wrexham. No two ways about it. And that has to be addressed. And I do think that's a, a big problem up here in Wrexham. Leslie Griffiths, dignified in defeat. Thank Thanks very, very much, much for joining you. us. And now from us here in Wrexham, it's back to you in the studio, John. Thanks, Rob, and I think it's time we uh, heard from Mai Davis about how things are panning out tonight. Uh, Mai. Well, Plaid Cymru certainly seem to be taking an absolute hiding. They've lost the run, Dennis Lewin, which we were kind of expecting. What we weren't expecting, Dennis, was the way they were going to lose. I mean, 11,000, Dennis Lewin, to Labour, huge majority. Yes, it's a very substantial reversal, but of course it does in a sense, it's the counterbalance, if you like, of the shift that happened back in 99. I mean, these are safe Labour seats that have returned home in that, uh, 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 in that sense. I mean, we did anticipate it. Um, and, but it is, a, I think, an important lesson for Plaid Cymru, who, you know, felt so proud, I think, that they'd made this inroad into South Wales, and it appears to be pulling, uh, pulling back, even though, of course, in some of the other seats they have polled uh, reasonably well. Were you expecting them to be beaten so convincingly, Clyde, in the Ronda? With, with, I mean, uh, what percentage did... Uh, the majority is nearly 8,000. <coughs> what was the percentage up by? I haven't got the figures in front of me. Well, it's gone up very substantially, and certainly at about 11 or about 11 percent swing, I think, both in the Ronda and in... Uh, and in uh, is, is I mean, I think these are quite significant. But I mean, remember the effort that the parties have put into this. I mean, the Labour Party have poured resources in there. Even the Prime Minister went to Rwanda. So, you know, they did want to win these very, very badly. Uh, uh, and, of course, they are essential if Roger Morgan's going to put together a majority. Are you surprised, Steve, by, by the way that Plaid have taken such a hiding? I, I, I mean, this, the quality of the candidate in Rwanda has, 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 has always been very good, but this is... This is, this is that, that result was the end of Yangwin Jones. I, I can't see Plaid clawing back from this one. It's, uh, they are really taking a terrible pounding. And if, on the face of it, they're not doing too well uh, in, their, in their heartlands either. Um, and um, I would have thought that um, after this, we'll be looking at uh, as a applied leadership challenge pretty quick, I would have. Uh, we're, looking, we're, looking, we're looking at the percentages now mm. on Rhonda. Leighton Andrews 23%. up to 23.6%. Mm. That's, that's, this is very convincing, that's, isn't it? That, that, that is much, much better. I mean, we were predicting quite a, a big swing to Leighton, but not, not that much. Not that much, no. <laughs> we've, got, we've got 16 Labour holes now, two Labour mm. regains. Um, we're over the halfway point now, haven't we? Have we had 20 seats or 21? I'm just counting 21 them up. Seats. 21 seats. Mm. How do but you think it's all shaping up? It's on track, though, because in a sense we, we had predicted that these seats will fall. I mean, we haven't yet had our shock result. I mean, I think there probably are a couple perhaps <laughs> lined up. I mean, yeah. We're hearing that there's an extremely tight count in mm. Cardiff North, where the Conservatives would be the challenges, and again in the Vale. And we haven't talked about the Conservatives, but in fact, looking at the numbers mm. as they're coming through, although, you know, in every seat, their voters held up or perhaps gained a little, I mean, not, not to the position where they're winning. So where they're strong, like in Cardiff North and the Vale, I think they are going to be pushing for uh, uh, in contention. And maybe we're going to find our first recounts of the night. I don't yes. Know. yes, exactly. The Vale of Glamorgan is going to be an interesting mm. seat, isn't it? Because David Melding is standing <coughs> there, the, uh, the Tory health spokesman. Mm. Now, he could well be out in his ear, but he may get in on a list seat, do you think? I think it's quite Steve? possible. Um, I mean, it's all to play for now, as, as Dennis said. It, Cardiff North appears to be tight indeed. Um, and if Cardiff North goes to the Conservatives and, and David Melding does lose uh, in the Vale, uh, then David should get a seat uh, come what may. Um, 
And I think we have to remember, Steve, the actual size of the vote is important here. I mean, because the Plaid Cymru vote has yes. collapsed in the Rhondda, you know, in the list, yes. I mean, presumably that's yes. gone through to the list. But, uh, I mean, you're aggregating mm -hmm. these votes and the Plaid vote there, will be down. But there is a trend here, Dennis, I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks to me that, that the, the kind of folk who, who wanted to see a, a, not, a, a, not a single party run in Wales a shift that they vote in the last few days, maybe in this last week, to try and stop Labour from winning an overall majority. And it seems to me that it's the Conservatives that have gained from that. Uh, and if that's what happens in Cardiff North and, um, and uh, in the Vale as well, I mean, if the Vale goes Tory, given that everything that's happened, we've all said that, um, that, that Labour would hold the Vale, that would be a major, major uh, swing away from Liberals and Plies into the Conservative camp to pull that off. Well, we haven't got there yet. I mean, mm. all we're hearing is that... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're well, hearing this on the wires, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, see how it goes. I think what is quite interesting is that the Labour Party were campaigning that people should vote Labour on both ballots. Times. Now, in 99, that didn't happen. There was mm. quite a hemorrhage away on the second ballot, particularly to Plaid Cymru. Now, clearly, those people have gone back. Um, when we looked at ticket splitting in our poll uh, last week, in fact, Labour loyalty, people voting mm. is in fact stronger uh, uh, for Labour Party than it is for Plaid Cymru or the mm. other parties. Now that is a real reversal of what happened in mm. '99, and I think that underlies some of these very big uh, uh, swings that we're seeing. Yeah, I think people also understand the system a bit better as well now. Do you think people are getting a bit more savvy to I how it works? I think there were a lot of people in the last time who thought they couldn't vote the same party twice, um, <laughs> and um, that's um, that's interesting <laughs> in itself. But it, I mean, we're going to get down to a, some serious numbers on these lists, I think, uh, very soon if uh, if this carries on the way the way that it is, um, and. Um, and, and anything's likely to happen in, in some of these. I mean, what okay. I'm particularly interested in seeing, apart from the fact that I come from um, from Monmouth, and so I'd quite like to see the Monmouth result. But I'm really keen to see what happens in this region with that BNP vote, um, and to see how um, how that's going to come in when that regional vote okay. is counted. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Dennis. Time to go back to the studio and to John. My thanks very much indeed. And I'm pleased to say that we're joined in the studio by uh, Carol Hyde, chair of the Welsh Conservatives. Your vote holding up and some small gains. You must be quite pleased about that. Well, yes, my bubble's blowing high and no one's <laughs> going to burst it tonight. I think that we're making some uh, good progress. And I hope that with some of our more target seats yet to announce, that we'll have some winning gains as we have in the elections all over the United Kingdom in local government. You are starting from a pretty low point, though, it must be said. That's for sure. The only way has to be up, surely. Absolutely, but we're, we're making good progress. Mm. Good progress. And of course, we were the only opposition because Plaid are Labour-based, so, and the Liberals were in bed with Labour, so we were the only opposition. We were the ones keeping our eye on the ball and on the money and on the purse. But of course the Assembly has been the saving grace of Conservatism in Wales, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Yes, we do have representation. But right. we, we are nine members and they're all of our party didn't want the assembly. I'll stop you there, Carol. We've got some uh, news Taylor in Bourne, Brecon, uh, where there's a declaration, and we should be able to see some pictures any moment. There they are. Willock Parry, 1,329. Elizabeth Fletcher Phillips, 1,042. David Felix Rees, 3,130. Victoria Kirsten Kirsty Williams, 13,325. I do hereby declare that the said Victoria Kirsten Williams is duly elected member for the said constituency. Thank you. from Kirsty uh, herself. Mr. Returning Officer, can I uh, begin by thanking you and all your staff who have organised this election and conducted this count in a truly professional uh, way. And we are, as candidates, I'm sure, all very grateful uh, okay, to you. Okay, let's look at that result uh, in Brecon in a little more detail. They have uh, done 
so a far majority this evening, of 5,300 for Kirsty. Uh, what do you make of that? Um, I'd like to thank, oh, well, let's, um, my let's hear what she's actually got to say first. Which this campaign has been uh, conducted, which has always been in a friendly, uh, a friendly way. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my, my agent, Veronica Watkins, and my campaign team. But most of all, I'd like to thank the people of this most beautiful constituency, Brecon and Ratnashir. It has been the most fantastic four years of my life, but I am aware that over the last four years, many of my constituents have had a very tough time indeed. There have been too many job losses in manufacturing, and the foot and mouth crisis was devastating for very, very many people. I trust over the next four years okay, I will be able straight. to repay the trust the people of Brecon. Let's Ranch go straight to the Vale of Glamorgan where and things are happening, we understand. We'll have better time. Uh, looks, this is the uh, returning officer. Ah, good now? Testing uh, the equipment, ready for <laughs> the uh, declaration. It's good to see the microphones well, working. Now to be in a position to declare the result of the poll. Uh, I'm not sure where the candidates are, but if they'd like to come up and uh, join me. I'll make the de declaration in English, okay. and my Why colleague Arwena will uh, make the declaration in Welsh. When she is finished, there will be an opportunity for all the Brecon. candidates to say... Democracy generally, in some places as low as 25%. That is a sad uh, reflection on the position that we find ourselves in. It is absolutely right that there are many problems in Brecon and Radnorshire, and I can assure people that if I am re-elected to the National Assembly, I will certainly continue to represent the people of this area, and I will certainly continue to represent their interests we have had serious problems in farming. We have had serious problems in manufacturing. My party has uh, led the, been in the vanguard of opposition to the damaging policies that we have seen, and we will certainly continue with that. And it has been a pleasure over this last four years to be a regional member and to represent the interests of this constituency. Let's leave uh, Nick Bourne and uh, go to the Vale of Glamorgan, Michael Melding, 9, where the declaration is happening. The number of ballot papers rejected were as follows. For want of official mark, two. Voting for more candidates than the voter was entitled to, 183. Rejected in part, 56, making a total of 241. And I do hereby declare that the said Jane Elizabeth Hutt is duly elected said electoral constituency. Has beaten, Jane Hutt has beaten David Melding in the Vale of Glamorgan. That's a blow for the Tories. They were hoping to, uh, to take that seat. And we'll hopefully hear from Jane Had, of course, the former health and minister in the last administration. Uh, yeah, disappointment for you, uh, Carol Hyde, there in the Vale. It really is. Um, David has been an excellent AM, an excellent shadow health minister. And I, I'm, I feel really sorry for him tonight because he's worked so hard throughout the whole of the period and he didn't get his just... It may not be the end of him yet, of course, he may come in on the on No, the um, particularly if we don't uh, take Cardiff North as well, our vote should be high enough for him to come in on the regional lists. Yes, you have uh, indeed uh, lost Cardiff North, which means uh, Sue Essex is uh, holding on there. Mm -hmm. uh, Gareth, what do you make of this? Well, I think those kind of seats, the Brecon result is an interesting one because that is always a marginal seat for, mm. for, for the Tories and Liberals, is the context there. They're obviously not making the gains in the first past the post seats, but obviously their vote is holding up and they should. I think the size of, uh, of the Tory contingency in the Assembly will be the same. Um, you know, they'll keep the, the nine seats. But it must be a disappointment to them if they're not winning first past the post seats. Yeah. Clwyd West, of course, is one that we've got to look out for yes. because um, that is their more marginal seat and, and they're challenging okay. Labour there. Gareth, I'll stop you. Let's hear from Jane Hutt making her acceptance speech in the Vale well, of Thank you very much. I'd first like to start by thanking the returning officer and all the people who've worked so hard. I know they've been up since the early hours this morning and are still with us tonight. So thank you for all your hard work and indeed the hard work in the weeks and months prior to this day, important day today. Also like to thank the police for looking after us all through fair weather and foul over the last few weeks and also to pay my respects to my candidate, candidates in this election. It's been a very decent and fair 
election campaign and certainly we've enjoyed time together and we've agreed to disagree as we should do in, a, in these elections but we've had a very, very fair and decent campaign. But thanks, my main thanks go to the people of the Vale of Glamorgan. People of the Vale of Glamorgan have given their trust in me to serve you as the Vale of Glamorgan Assembly Member, Labour Assembly Member for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, of course, in this position, as we go into an election campa uh, campaign, we must never assume anything. We must know that we go out to, to campaign, to put our case, to argue, to stand by our record, and to listen to the people of our communities, whether it's town, vale, village, throughout the whole of the Vale of Glamorgan. People have come out and supported me and nearly trebled my majority the people of the Vale of Glamorgan. I want to serve you and I'm very willing to serve you now for another four years. But I couldn't do this without the campaign team that's backed me, backed me in this campaign. And first and foremost, I must thank Neil Moore, my agent. And Neil and his team, Neil and his team have worked tirelessly not just over the last few work weeks, but the last month, few months. A very passionate uh, uh, Jane Hutt uh, accept acceptance speech in, uh, in the Vale of Glamorgan. She's back in the Assembly, but will she be back uh, at health, Gareth? Well, she suffered for four years under that burden. It is probably one of the most difficult portfolios to have because we all have an interest in it. And, you know, if anything goes wrong, that's highlighted. Um, many things go right but of course it's the mistakes in the health service that are highlighted it's probably a burden that she would like to get rid of and who will take it on mm. perhaps somebody mm. like Edwina Hart she would dearly mm. like it so we might see some changes there she might have a much more e easier portfolio next time I'm hearing some very interesting news news it'll be interesting uh, to Carol Hyde is to be a recount in Cardiff North it's obviously going to the wire there that's very good news, <laughs> as long as it turns out all right for us. Gareth. <laughs> well, I think, you know, th this would be a really good result for, for the uh, Conservative Party if they mm. gained that. Of course, it should be a safe Conservative seat. I mean, mm. they say it always was for mm. years and years and years. And, you know, the measure of the kind of decline in the Conservative Party is the fact that, you know, we're talking about gaining seats like that, which were natural mm. Tory seats in the past. Mm. Of course, it's held uh, at Westminster by uh, Rodri's... Uh, Wife. Yes, indeed. I'm going to say, but it was a, 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 a seat held for years by um, William Jones. Will, William Jones. And, of his minister, yeah. and if they're going to hold um, office again and, and you know have a government, then those are the kind of seats that the Conservative Party have got to win in Wales. You're not getting any beeps on your bleeper, are you? Not right this minute. But we live in hopes. I think one of the things about. Okay, I think we're going to hear. Uh, from David Melding uh, in the Vale of Glamorgan. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Returning Officer, can I thank you all for being here and conducting yourselves so decently, and to all the staff who have uh, been involved in this uh, count for doing it so I'd also like to uh, repeat Jane's thanks to the police. Indeed, everyone who's been involved in conducting this vote across the Vale of Glamorgan uh, today. Can I make a, a couple of very personal uh, uh, messages of thanks? First to Sarah Sharp, my agent. Uh, as all political candidates know, it is your agent that does the hard work and certainly all the worrying. They don't tell us a tenth of what is really happening so that we can get on with the job of meeting the electorate. And I'm deeply grateful to you, Sarah, for all your support. And to my campaign aide, Genevieve Thomas, uh, who's kept me in a relatively happy and calm state throughout and has had to put up with uh, my constant analysis of what's been happening in the last four weeks. I'm very, very grateful. I've been backed by an excellent association. Indeed, I think it's fair to say the people of the Vale of Glamorgan are served well by the political parties in terms of the strength, and we've had a keen contest uh, tonight, but it's because of the work of many, many members of our various political parties and what they volunteer for uh, the public good as they see it. Can I thank the... David uh, Melding, a conceding defeat...
Kimberley and devolution. And on the, you know, the streets of Cowbridge, where I went and talked to people there, they were saying, yes, we don't want to vote because we don't agree with the Assembly. And mm. those would be the people that would naturally vote for David Melding. So I think there's a lot of education to be done by you, Carol, mm. for you in your yeah. own supporters there. Well, we tell them, we do tell them that the Conservative Party is working to make the Assembly work for the whole of the people of Wales. But is that message getting well, through? Well, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. OK, let's uh, go and hear from John Marrick, the winning candidate uh, in Wrexham. Thanks, John. Yes, I'm with John Marrick, who's won by um, just under 1,000 votes. Were you surprised by the majority you got there? No, I, I think, looking at it, um, Labour's been having a good evening in, in, in Wales, and Plaid Cymru haven't been having a good evening. That was reflected, I think, in this result. Normally, I think I would have probably achieved a bigger majority. But, you know, a majority of one is enough, and a thousand is a lot better than one. Now, when you said your thanks in your speech there, you thanked absolutely every party apart from the Labour Party. Is that spite, or is that, like the Italians say, revenge is a dish best no, eaten cold? It, it, it's not spite. I didn't certainly say anything against the Labour Party. I don't want to rent in, into the game of lies and smears that they've been um, campaigning on in this campaign. But I really couldn't thank them for running a fair fight. It would have been dishonest of me to do so, so I thought the best thing is to say nothing. Nevertheless, Less, uh, you know, former Labour MP of almost 20 years' experience, you've twisted the knife far more effectively than, say, a Conservative win in Wrexham would have, haven't you? No, I haven't. I've been honest. Uh, the, the Labour Party fought the campaign on lies and smears, anonymous letters, which are in the public domain, so um, everybody can, can see, see that anonymous letter, two anonymous letter, one of them, of course, from the um, candidate's husband. Um, and it would have simply all, been... Yeah. Yes, of course. It, it simply would have been dishonest of me to have thanked the Labour Party for a fair fight. Now, I don't want to denigrate the Labour Party either, and I thought the best thing to do was not to make any reference. There are lots of issues to be resolved here. It seems, for, for the moment anyway, you've certainly dealt with the Labour Party here in Wrexham and possibly a country, across the country mm. with this kind of result. A massive blow. I think they'll probably get over it, but I think what they need to do, of course, is to worry about the people. The Wrexham Council needs to worry about the people here. And I think, if I may say so, there, there, there is a sense in which Wrexham people wanted to vote for an alternative, uh, as opposed to the Labour Party. And I think that's probably something the Labour Party analysts should probably worry about. Now, I suppose if you look nationally, not just across Wales, but across Britain, the independents are starting to march here. The, the gentleman who won Wire Forest, of course, in the yes. general election. Do you think we're turning away from political parties and more to, to personalities? I think we are, because remember the Labour Party has moved over now to being a right-wing party, or right, right, right of centre. Of course, gives the Conservative Party a great deal of problem, because, of course, the um, Labour Party has pinched all their policies, as, as you know, with foundation hospitals and top-up fees and um, fighting the war in Iraq. Um, so there is a problem, and people realise that, that there isn't a choice. So it's natural, I think, that they will think about independent views, and I'm pleased about that. Oh, when you were in the Labour Ford, you were accused mm. of being a one-man band. Well, now you are legitimately a one-man band. You're a, a one-man party, aren't one you? Man. Yes, one, I don't think that party's going to um, last for very long. But, <laughs> but there is... There you is announcing <laughs> the demise of the John Marrick Independence <laughs> no, Party? No, 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 not yet. No, no, we've got... <laughs> let me get to Cardiff. You've only uh, been elected see. half an hour. I have, I have, I know. <laughs> let me get to Cardiff and we'll see, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I am prepared to support any policy from any party if it's in the interests of Wrexham or the, or the Wel Wel Welsh people. We've got to rise above personal antagonisms and work together as an uh, assembly. A lot of the um, decision making is, of course, consensual uh, in Cardiff as opposed, opposed to London. I have always played my part in that and I will continue to do so. John Marrick, thanks ever so much for joining us. Well done. And Thank you. From us here in Wrexham, it's back to the studio. Thanks, Rob. Some very interesting uh, news uh, coming through to us here. There's going to be a recount in Carmarthen West and a recount in Llanelli, where we're told uh, Labour are claiming they're just 23 votes ahead. Gareth, it's uh, very interesting. Yeah. Obviously what's happening, there's a different swing happening towards Labour the further west you go, um, so because obviously Carmarthen West is, is a Labour-held seat, so if there's a recount there, it means that Plyde are within, gra within reach of mm. getting that seat. In Clanetley, I gather it's the other way around. Mm. But it does show that you know the swing that we had in the east and in the Caerphillies and in the valleys um, areas is not moving west. So you have the divide of Wales, you know, Plyde hold the west, possibly, um, 
apart yeah. from Little England beyond Wales, maybe. And um, the East is very much Labour territory. Let's bring in Mark Sodi here, who's the Lib Dem campaign uh, manager. What do you make of the evening so far? Well, if you look at the map of Wales, there seems to be a T. Uh, we, we as a party seem to be doing better at holding the regional vote in the north, for example. So Gareth's right about the east-west split, but there's also that cut across the north there. Um, it's a real patchwork night. There is, uh, there, there is a different things happening in different places. It may have been a boring election, but it's certainly an <laughs> it's interesting result. You can say that again. I think we've got some pictures of another recount, yet another recount, the third that we're aware of. Uh, that's happening in Cardiff North. Uh, very interesting uh, count there. Of course, currently held by Sue Essex, but can she hold on? Uh, let's go and hear from our panel. Uh, we're with uh, Joe Keenan. Joe. John, thank you. Yes, uh, turning into quite an extraordinary night, actually. Um, you must be extremely heartened by talk of the recount in Cardiff North. Well, I think that it's important that the Conservatives really endeavour to win first past the post constituents. Melding, when he spoke earlier, was quite right in that. Uh, it is a good night for us, I think, in Wales. It's an excellent light night nationally. The current position is that we have won more than 500 council seats across the country. We're the biggest party in local government. We hold more councils but than any be, other party. It would be, it would be so even better, though, if you actually won another constituency. <laughs> Absolutely. Seat, and in so. Scotland, we've done that. The leader of the, uh, of the Conservatives in Scotland has won a seat tonight. And obviously, we would like to start winning constituencies, although I we have got a proportional system, which I think is going to result in there being actually increased Conservative representation I'm going to go to, uh, in to the Simon Assembly. Thomas. We just saw their plight come with not a surprise, really, frankly. Uh, no, it's not a surprise, and um, um, not the way the, the, those first results went. And we've, when we first saw those swings, we knew that uh, it wouldn't be possible, therefore, to maintain our presence in the South Wales Valley seats. Though it is interesting now, as we see in further west we go in, we see in a strengthening ply vote, for example, the Carmarthen West and South Pembrokeshire seat is, is, is a, if there's a recount there, then it obviously shows we're in with a. It, it a, seems a, a that there's just 23 seats or so, so we're told internationally uh, in Labour's favour. The loss of that seat will be absolutely devastating. Well, it could be the difference, of course, to be fair, between Labour getting the majority or not in the National Assembly if they win a constituency seat. It could uh, also mean that your, your number of uh, seats is heading downwards to sort of, you know, 14, 13, 12. Well, we, we, we certainly, we're certainly looking at under 15 now, aren't we? And uh, that, w that would have been a bad case scenario for us at the start of this election. And therefore, it's, you know, it's only fair to say that is even at the end of the election, therefore, a poor result for us. And we, we're not doing very well. Of course, the man beside you were happy with the way things are going. Going very well indeed. We're seeing Labour candidates doubling their majorities across Wales. We're seeing Labour making great progress and gaining seats from the nationalists across Wales. I think the important message that we've got across is that Labour is delivering in Wales and the people of Wales want more of the same. Roger Williams, uh, the three constituency uh, seats that the Lib Dems held over the last four years, safe. Not likely to make any more gains, though, and, and actually your, your vote is sort of not going up at all. What's that going to mean in terms of the, the list seats? Well, we're very happy that we've won those three constituencies and won them uh, with very good results. I think Jonathan protests too much. Uh, the Tories still haven't won a, a constituency seat tonight, and we're looking for the Monmouth result, and we understand that's very close. Uh, but uh, the way the votes uh, pan out on the regional list, we've still got to look at it. Uh, we've heard that uh, we have a good result in North Wales, and it may be that we'll pick up a, another regional seat there. So Do you we think, don't know uh, given the way it's panning out, that you're likely to be uh, needed in any future coalition? It's looking less likely as the well, evening goes on. we never know, do we? And uh, Labour have yet to uh, hold uh, Carmarthen West and South Pembroke, and that's a very interesting seat. I'm going to uh, stop you there, and let's go across to uh, Ernest Morn. At the said election is as follows in alphabetical order Bennett Nicholas, Democrats Ayrid Vadol Cymru, Welsh Liberal Democrats, Dwyvil Agwithig Now, 2089, Jones Ian Wynn, Plaid Cymru. The Party of Wales. Now meal, Pedor Kant, Pimp Dega Dai. 9,452. Jones, William Gerwin. I'm Gaysid Plaid Labour Party candidate, Hue Meal, Adaideg Petwar. 6,024. 
Rogers, Peter Standing, Plaid Gidward Al Khumri, Welsh Conservative Party, Saith Meal, Cairns Now Dega Saith, 7,197. Wicks, Francis Charles, Plaid Anibudiaith Adirnas in Edig, UK Independence Party, Petor Cairns Uwyth Dega Gyn, 481. Yr oedd felly yn datgan bod Ian Wynne Jones, I, de, I declare therefore that Ian Wynne Jones is duly elected to serve as a member in the National Party Assembly for Wales for the Innisbourne constituency. Guy, in a second time, uh, so, Yian Wynne Jones are home uh, at Anis Morn, but uh, some very interesting results there behind him. Well, yes, and I say I think the shock of the night is the um, Conservative vote. I mean, say Peter Rogers there with 7,000 votes, 2,000 behind. Of course, Anis Morn is one of those seats, and I say for, for some time, you know, the, the, the Conservative Party held that seat um, for a very long time after um, Cledwin Hughes um, uh, resigned. Um, retired. Um, so there is a, a Conservative vote yeah. there and obviously Peter Rogers has got it out. It is a pity really that they didn't put him higher on the list. He might, uh, he's now he's finished of course as an AM um, because he's not, he's <laughs> um, after his fight with the Liberal Democrats in uh, on his moon. So obviously um, it uh, created the right publicity for 7,000 voters to go backing him. And the Labour vote quite interesting there too. Yes, I think um, they were expecting to do a lot better than there because one of the seats that some of them were predicting yeah. that they would actually win that seat and uh, obviously it was a big task for them because Yen yeah, Wen being the leader of a party it's unlikely that he would have lost that but uh, I think um, he can't be um, completely happy with his vote Yen yeah, Wen and obviously he's got big problems with the rest of the party after, mm. after the showing in Wales as a whole so I think his problems begin as a result of, the, of that vote tonight. Of course, uh, Yarnwyn Jones is beginning his acceptance speech uh, in Welsh as soon as he uh, continues in English. We will hear what he has to say. Uh, you must be quite pleased, Carol Hyde. It's a very good result in Anis Morn. I'm just sorry that Peter's so low down the list because he's been an excellent AM for us and quite a pugilist as well. OK, let's hear from the Plaid's leader. As well as here in Anglesey. It's a great privilege for me to represent this island once again in the National Assembly. I'm looking forward to the challenge which now faces me. We've discussed the issues in this election, the health service, education, the elderly, jobs, our streets and how we need to make them safe. And we've also made it clear that we have to understand that the National Assembly that we have must be turned into a powerhouse parliament for Wales before too long. As well as, being, as well as being the candidate for Anglesey, I've also had the great privilege and honour of leading Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales, on a national level throughout this campaign. I'm very proud indeed of the programme that we fought this campaign on, and I am determined to pursue that programme as we now enter the second term of the National Assembly for Wales. Uh, let's look at that result in a little uh, more detail. Yarmin Jones uh, romping home, well not romping home, but home with a majority of uh, 2,255, but Peter Rogers uh, breathing down his neck. Yes, I think that obviously, um, you know, that he, his majority is down, um, and, um, but I think um, Peter can claim some mm. credit because he, he's replaced Labour as the, as the party to challenge uh, Plaid Cymru in Nanny Um I don't suppose Labour would be too pleased with that result. 
I think we've moved on in four years, haven't we? S rather seamlessly, Plaid Cymru have taken us from saying that they were going to form the government this time to perhaps they wouldn't get an overall majority to, to, to now not being anywhere near, to the point that we're even wondering. We think it's marvellous that their leader has got re-elected. That's, that's quite a trans transformation in four years. Admittedly, at the last elections, they were at a high point, but um, it's, you know, I think we mustn't forget what's happened in four years. Let's uh, cross uh, now to the Vale of Glamorgan, where the winning candidate, Jane Hutt, is with uh, Peter Cullimore. Yes, um, Jane, congratulations. You've just won by 2,500 votes. What's your reaction? I'm absolutely delighted. This is great news for Labour in the Vale of Glamorgan and Labour in Wales. I've nearly trebled my majority here over the past four years. It's thanks to the people of the Vale of Glamorgan, thanks to a wonderful Labour campaign, and I'm absolutely delighted with the result. Does the margin of victory surprise you because Labour have done badly on health, and as Health Minister, you're mainly associated with that? Well, the media chose an issue of course I, I always knew and the electorate that, I knew that the people of the Vale of Glamorgan were backing me I had it on the doorstep it came through in your poll a few weeks ago I've had tremendous goodwill messages from support from all over Wales from not only the health service from patients themselves who are saying Jane you've got a tough job but you started to make a change you've got the money in place you've sown the seams Jane and you're doing a tremendous job now of course we had to wait and see what the electorate said they've given me their backing my opponent, David Meldy, even recognised that today. He said he scrutinised me, but I came through and beat him very fairly and squarely here in the Vale of Glamorgan. He paid tribute to me, and I think the people of the Vale of Glamorgan and Wales have done so tonight. Do you think you're going to be Health Minister in the next administration? But there's lots more to do with health, and obviously I'm ready to take any challenge that comes before me. So you definitely want to be Health Minister still? Clearly there's a lot more to be done. I've had a wonderful four years. I've enjoyed this job because it has been the most challenging opportunity. It's about improving the health service and making sure that we improve the health of the people of Wales. There's more to be done, and that's why if we're heading for a Labour victory, I believe we can really deliver the job. Well, there's a very happy and uh, jubilant Jane Hutt there um, expressing confidence that perhaps um, she will continue as health minister. Now back to you. I can tell you that Labour have held Pontypridd, Jane Davison's seat. For more on that result and the rest of the evening's uh, results, let's go over to Mai in the newsroom. Thanks, John. Well, the health secretary there trebling her majority, Dennis. She's very happy, isn't she? A very happy bunny indeed. Yes, it's quite an interesting result, this, because, in fact, David Melding, the obvious challenger, also put up his vote. And what has happened in the Vale, really, is that Chris Fa Franks's plied vote has clapped. They've sunk, He's isn't lost, it? you know, 10% just went like that. And that's quite an interesting transformation, really. I mean, perhaps the Vale of Glamorgan isn't somewhere where we'd expect there to be a no. large plied uh, vote, though there is a sort of a little enclave there in Dinner's Palace. But it but, went down quite a lot, didn't it? About 9% <coughs> or something. Yes, indeed. But, I mean, we, you know, we saw this as a, as a, as a Tory Labour fight, and it was almost as if they had to score points off each other and in fact the extra votes have come from somewhere else okay well let's have a look at the seats declared so far because uh, we've got I think 27 28 seats declared so far that's how the chamber looks at the moment although I don't think we've got Ponta we've only just had that declaration talk us through what we can see there Dennis well, in a sense, uh, I suppose the seats are coming in on plan. I mean, if it, you know, we're only really dealing with constituencies here. Obviously, the list seats will come later. But the seats we had anticipated that the Labour Party would gain from play coming, they've done so, and they've done so in trumps. I mean, let's uh, be fair. You know, these are very remarkable uh, results. But uh, Rodri Morgan's making his way towards that uh, uh, majority, or at least the 30, 30 seats we He's anticipate he might the get. Magic number, isn't He's he? lost Wrexham, yeah. but we are there. You know. <laughs> There are some recounts. Uh, there's obviously a t very tight contest in Carmarthen West. There's a tight contest in Cardiff North. We've got quite a few recounts. I think Cardiff North is a recount. Mm. Uh, we've had a tip-off as a possible recount. And I think there was one other. Carmarthen West is, Carmarthen Carmarthen West is mm. a possible. Well, uh, it's quite interesting, of course, because if Play Company were to lose that to the Labour Party, in a sense, it doesn't make that much difference, or is unlikely to. Because, because Helen, Helen Mary would take the list mm. seat, and Labour so would be unlikely to out, get their West Wales less yeah. seat at that point. So they would cancel each other. Psychologically, it's a big problem for Play Cymru, though, to lose that seat. Yes. Down with it for 
also that that that, that you know, all the parties made health and Labour's health record an issue in this election, and uh, and, uh, and James trebled her majority. So that seems uh, as if um, you know the, the population of the Vale at, at least are endorsing um, Labour's health policies, but these three recounts couldn't can throw this whole thing straight out of the window right now if they were to go the wrong way, such as the closeness of this uh, particular election. Well, I think the results we're seeing suggest that the pattern and the track we anticipated beforehand is, yes. in fact, where we're going. Yeah. So although there may be a rogue result, um, you know, I suspect there won't be that much uh, variation from our expectations. We're just waiting for three safe Labour seats now, aren't we? Ogmore, Swansea East and Bridge End. Yeah, the yes. others are all marginal, aren't they? We're it's waiting for Carmarthen West. Connery, uh, Clwyd West. Um, what are the other well, marginals Connery, we're waiting for? of course, would be a Labour gain, not yes. a Labour. So, I mean, there's a possibility mm. that if there is to be a loss, either in Cardiff or... Uh, in Carmarthen West, then Conway yeah. could be very important to and, compensate and, and Carmarthen that. West being a, a Labour seat as it, is, as it currently stands. Mm. And, and of course, mm. Car I mean, Cardiff North, uh, if that goes to the Conservatives, that'll be a real shock for the Labour Party. So Lucy Wessex. Well, in a sense, I mean, history would be reasserting itself. Yes, it would, I mean, yeah. When I drive around Cardiff North, it looks like a Tory seat <laughs> to me. Um, and uh, the fact that, I mean, Julie Morgan herself you know, commands such a large majority mm. in, 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 in Parliament in it, you know, is mm. quite remarkable. Um, uh, you know, there's a sense that at some point, Cardiff North would go home. Yes. I mean, there's been some evidence in, in local council elections, and uh, if there is a change, or it may just be reducing Sue Essex's majority yes. to a very fine line. Mm. Uh, but either way, it's another sign, in fact, that the Tories really have had quite a good day. Oh, yeah. They might they, not they end up with many day, more seats to show for it, but certainly the votes are there. They're gaining in virtually every seat the, we look at. The irony of this, uh, of tonight's result for the Conservative Party, is that, the, that they, they'll probably end up with the same number of seats they've got. One constituency and then uh, eight um, second-hand seats, so to speak. And um, But th this could save IDS. It could, couldn't this, it, This really? result in Wales could save IDS's leadership. That would be... Well, I'm not sure many people in uh, central <laughs> office actually <laughs> observe Wales like that. I mean, I haven't heard what's happening... But they need the all the help they can get, though, don't they? elections, <laughs> and uh, they're going to be the most important. But, yes, but, I think... But, uh, I think, I think, I think IDS I think will suddenly can, discover it, yes, I think we can rest assured that if they haven't done too well in the English Council seats and they've done well here, IDS will be in town tomorrow. Yes, he'll suddenly learn to speak well to me. IDS was an able cadet, and I think any port in a storm, I think. Without question. Are we in a position to talk about any of the least seat, seats, uh, list seats yet? I mean, uh, South East, possibly. You, you had a prediction for the least, think, list seats I, I, there, I, didn't I you? I think the way that the South East has gone so far, the, the list seat is pretty predictable. Um, I mean, we're, so two I mean, Clyde, one Tory, one Lib Dem? I, I think so, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, all, everything that we're hearing from Monmouth is that Monmouth is going to go to the Conservatives, and, and if that is the case, then... Uh, it's a pretty foregone conclusion, I think, how, that's, how those, those four are going to well, go. Well, assuming there hasn't been any major ticket mm. splitting between the two yeah. ballots, um, you know, I mean, in aggregate, these things tend to stay fairly close, even though individuals might uh, mm. might uh, change. Yeah. Um, we need to see, I mean, there is a proliferation of fringe candidates, um, and uh, they probably take more votes from the Liberal Democrats than they would yeah. do from yeah. the Tories or from and the Labour Party. And okay. if, it, if it does go that way, of course, then uh, Lindsay Whittle will get in. The Absolutely. Of, uh, Council. Yes, he'll get in on the list, won't on, he? On the list, yeah. We're going to have to leave it up for the moment and uh, go back to the studio. Uh, and John, my my thanks very much indeed. Let's go and hear from uh, Nick Bourne, the uh, Conservative in the Assembly. He's been talking to our reporter Lynn Courtney. Ask him this question. So, first of all, Nick, are you actually disappointed by your vote here tonight? Not by the vote. I mean, obviously, I'd have liked to have taken Bracken and Randishire. Of course, it's come in our favour slightly. The Labour Party. underlining it, this trend that we're seeing in Wales tonight. Now, if we have a look to see what happens in the general picture, if you are, in fact, losing seats, is this going to put your leadership under pressure? There's no evidence we are losing seats. I mean, all the evidence is that we'll be having the same team back in, but I don't want to make predictions of that course. We're getting the results in now, so we've got to see what the actual results are when they finish later tonight, or I probably should say later this morning, because obviously we've got quite a long night in front of us for the rest of the results. OK, Nick, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. There we are, and that's back now to the studio. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Elaine. Well, I've got uh, some new guests. Uh, Howard Williams, what are you making of all this tonight? Are you enjoying yourself? 
I'm enjoying watching the results come in. I'm enjoying the, the story of rise and fall, which is always a great political story. I think the most instructive political story of the evening really is the political sadness of Plaid Cymru this evening. Because uh, at a time when one looks at the pattern of political Europe and uh, sees all sorts of very small countries gaining their independence, here is a party that uh, in the course of this campaign and over the past few years has failed to speak the name of independence, which its original founders loved so much. And when a party loses its identity like that, it pays a price, and that's what we've seen this evening, I think. Is this down to the leadership of Yarn Wynne Jones, or was it something bigger than that, do you think? I think the leadership undoubtedly doesn't, doesn't help. But when you're in a, our kind of political culture now, when political parties are divided by very, very hair's breadth, really, there isn't really much room in that, in that centre ground. And Plaid Cymru, having given up on that original linguistic and national and cultural heritage, has found it very difficult to re-establish itself in this, in this new world. Let's bring in uh, Sh Siobhan uh, McKellen. What do you make of it all? Well, I don't think anybody should be running away with the idea that anything is a great success for anybody tonight, really. When you look at the, the turnout, it's, it's deeply disappointing. And I think there's uh, many people who are clearly disengaged from the political from the political process and I think when we look at the demographics of the turnout what's likely to be very concerning is the number of young people who aren't turning out to vote and I don't think it matters talking about new and innovative ways to, to vote being able to vote on the internet and all those sorts of no. things no I don't because I think that's 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 not the issue I think it's gonna be the same old people using using the internet I mean my mum lives in England and she's voting on the internet but she always votes it's not that it's engaging people in the political process getting them to feel excited by politics um, interested in it passionate about it and that's what we've lost. All the, the three out of the four major parties in Wales are scrabbling around, as Hal said, over, over very much similar territory. None of them are thinking outside the box. We haven't got anything that's different or radical, and it's not surprising that young people think, well, that's, you know, that's not for me, I'm not interested. So it's very pedestrian managerialism at the end of the day. That's what we've got. Who's going to manage the system best? Elizabeth Haywood, are you worried about the turnout? I am, yes. It was one of the reasons why we did the first past the post uh, programme in the first place. And I think I'd agree with both Hal and with Siobhan. I mean, I think, it's, I think it's very worrying about the turnout. I think what it actually says is that the Assembly has no oomph factor. It doesn't right. matter which party you're looking at. It has absolutely no oomph factor. And what's actually happening this time round is that Plaid Cymru has been seen not to deliver. It was seen by the electorate, whether they voted for it or not, as being the party that might possibly be a bit different, and it hasn't been. And I think that's where the, you know, people are a bit depressed about that and therefore they're saying, hmm, well, is it really worth it? So we haven't had anything positive actually really delivered, or only a few small things in terms of the overall government um, in the, in the uh, Assembly. And then the opposition parties haven't actually delivered anything from the other side either. So they've been disappointing. So everyone's disappointed. And that's certainly not going to bring the younger vote in. Um, I actually don't agree with Siobhan about, about the, uh, mm. the systems. I do think that it is worthwhile trying some of the others. There's no doubt um, that, you know, that postal voting has helped. If you look at just this week, for example, there's a huge number of people who are on holiday. Now, yes, maybe they are the sort of people who would vote anyway but at least they had a chance. It's much easier now to get your postal vote than it used to be in the old days when you virtually had to prove you knew exactly the date of your 15 <laughs> grandmother's deaths or whatever before you could even get a postal vote. So that, that's very important. And for those who want a more diversified pattern of political culture in Wales, there is something inherently depressing about the, the sight and sound of these returning, crashing, great beer gold style Labour majorities uh, with, uh, with you know, descriptions like Mr. Turek's of John Merrick as a, as a turncoat which is not the way in which one should conduct a political conversation, I think. But it's also quite interesting to see the difference between what's actually coming out in Wales, even though I don't think it's particularly positive, and what's coming out in England, which appears to be this rise in, in the Tories as you know, the local government party, which hasn't been seen for, I don't remember anything, anything like it. Um, so you know, they're crowing over that. They're not mm. getting that in Wales. Don't quite know why, whether it's a cultural thing in Wales or whether it's something to do with the system. I think it's course. overwhelmingly a cultural thing. I'll have to jump in the, there the, and the uh, Tory. stop you there. Uh, we're going to go now to uh, Juliet Piper, who's at uh, Labour Party headquarters. 
Yes, well, John, as you say, the celebrations already underway here at Labour Party headquarters in Cardiff. And I'm joined by uh, Alan Michael now. Alan, uh, a good night for Labour? A very good night, I think, in two different ways. One is the sort of consolidation and support uh, for Labour Assembly members in some areas where you wouldn't expect Labour to be retaining the support. And the other thing is the falling away, quite dramatically, uh, of the support for the nationalists in Labour's heartlands, places like Rhondda and Islwyn and a number of other places, the vote going down quite dramatically for them. I mean, it really is a party atmosphere here, but, it, but it's not a result in every, every constituency that you wanted. Uh, no, it isn't, but you see, I think what's happening is that the whole assembly process is maturing, uh, and this is about the support and decisions that are people making about who they want to represent them in a devolved assembly. The nationalist agenda has gone. We're now onto the agenda that Labour has had for a long time, which is to enable the Assembly to be a powerhouse for improving services, for dealing with things like health and education, the things that people want to talk about when you meet them on the doorstep. And I think it's a ringing endorsement, really, of the very hard work that's gone in to creating and building the Assembly over the uh, last four years and for many years before that. But a very low turnout again. I mean, I mean, is this voter apathy? People really not care about the Assembly? Well, the uh, low turnout is something that's reflected across the local government elections in England, the elections in Scotland, and which we're seeing right across Europe, including U Eastern Europe. I think there's a very big challenge for all of us, uh, that is for politicians, but also for political journalists, to find ways uh, in a, a period where we no longer just have one or two news channels, but we have dozens. We have a plethora of of media that demand people's attention uh, and re-engaging people so that they understand that elections uh, and political decisions actually affect their lives and those of their families and their children is actually a challenge for all of us who consider that to be important, for democracy and politics to be important. The question though on everyone's lip is, lips though, I mean you're celebrating here, but are Labour going to get the landslide victory that they wanted? Well, uh, we gave Wales an electoral system that prevents Labour having a landslide. Uh, we have created created a system which gives everybody else a chance of being represented. What I hope will happen is that we have uh, a continuation of the trends we've seen this evening, a strong Labour team in the Assembly able to lead the Assembly and perhaps greater engagement in a positive way by the other parties in making the Assembly really effective. Well, Alan Michael, I'll let you get back to the party and for now from Labour headquarters in Cardiff, it's back to the studio. Juliet, let's go straight uh, to Carmarthen West where uh, things are happening. McGarry Mary Kathleen 2222 <laughs> Thomas David Nicholas 4917 <laughs> Williams Arthur Ronald 580 The number of ballot papers rejected was 131, and I do hereby declare that the said Christine Marjorie Gwither is duly elected as a member of the National Assembly for Wales for the said constituency. Aroivi Sidam Shavnodisod. And there's uh, that uh, result in more detail. Christine uh, Gwither holding on there. Majority of just 515. Christine Gwither, of course, the uh, controversial uh, agriculture minister, was also a vegetarian. And uh, Clear Hughes Griffiths, uh, hot on her heels there with 7,000. That's quite an interesting result, isn't it? Yes, obviously, uh, the idea of... Uh, a vegetarian agricultural minister sort of goes down quite well, just uh, just past the post and <laughs> down there, and in Pembrokeshire. So she lives and uh, survives to fight another day. What do you make of that? Well, I mean, a little bit better for a little bit better for Plaid there, really. I mean, but uh, a little bit of a squeeze. Yeah, nothing much to nothing much to read. And she, she didn't look terribly happy herself, did she? Really, having that? Perhaps uh, perhaps she rather hoped she'd uh, be chucked out, having had enough the last time uh, the last time round. Um, you know, I, I, I've seen Labour go up hugely in the Valleys areas, maybe not so much in, in, in West Wales, but uh, again, I don't think Clyde can draw any uh, yeah. major happiness from, uh, from that, can they? Elizabeth? 
Well, I don't have a lot to add, really. I mean, I've always wondered what Christine's had, you know, had against carrots. But, um, <laughs> I mean, I suppose there's not a lot to say, really. But it's, it's, it, Kamala and West was, it was always going to be one of those ones which was going to have a bit of a difficulty in this yeah. election. Um, and it's interesting to see that Christine's actually held on to it. Um, says, I'm not sure whether it says more for Labour or whether it says less for Plaid. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably less for Plaid. And, that's and the we, we are seeing a very kind of different pattern of political development across Wales this evening as well, of course, because we're seeing now really the return of those kind of big traditional Labour heartlands in the south and the southeast, and then Plaid Cymru reasserting itself further west into the north, and then we have the Conservatives asserting in, in the localities. Let's hear what uh, Christine Gwither has to say the staff, the police, who've all worked very hard tonight and will continue to do so as we count the list votes. I would like to thank especially my agents and my family as well for helping me through this uh, election campaign. It's been a very, very good night for Labour in West Wales. We've, had pr we've held Priscelli and well done to Tamsin for, for achieving that. And of course, we've campaign that they waged. Thank you very much again. Okay, let's go to the Rhonda now where we can hear from uh, Leighton Andrews uh, in the uh, in the Rhonda constituency. Oh, well, we, we can't hear from uh, Leighton Griffiths uh, at the moment. Uh, let's, let's, let's go back to the panel. We were talking earlier about making politics sexy. How do you do that? Well, I, I would always start by saying you've got to have somebody who is charismatic, who has principles, and who is able to communicate. And that means actually coming out with a fairly short, sharp message. And I don't think many of our politicians today, whether in the Assembly or whether in Westminster, are very good at it. And Wales, of course, suffers because we've only got 60 members altogether. If you're trying to find a core out of that which is going to be able to provide all of those qualities, um, you've got to have a pretty good core to start off with. And, and, and we, it's, it's very difficult to find that. You need at least six, ten out of that six. And broaden well, the net as well of recruitment yeah. as well. well so, I mean, so many of these guys that we see uh, on, on our television screens this evening have come up through the orthodox route. Mm. You know, they've mm. been councillors, mm. by and large. Mm which is why they've gone on to this next layer. And or then researchers. perhaps, or researchers. Or, or special you know, advisors. Or special yeah. advisors, <laughs> indeed. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd get that one in there for you, Hal. There's some special advisors involved in different ways. I think we're gonna, we can, in fact, now go to the Rhonda. Andrews, congratulations. Not just a personal victory for you, of course, but you've uh, won Rhonda back for Labour. Well, it's a victory for the Rhonda Labour Party, which is one of the strongest campaigning Labour parties in Wales. Um, and I'm delighted uh, for the, at that success, and I'm delighted that the, work, that the work that's been put in has been so well rewarded tonight. What do you put it down to mainly? Well, I think uh, we've learnt in the Rhonda that you cannot take people for granted. You've got to go out and earn their votes, earn their trust. And we've been campaigning day in, day out. We've got a campaigning Labour mem Member of Parliament who's uh, helped to put the Rhonda on the map in Westminster. And I think that's helped to demonstrate to the people of the Rhonda uh, that Labour really does care. Now, you were one of the organisers of the Yes campaign in the referendum for devolution be very disappointed with the turnout here in Rhonda and especially in other places in Wales as well in this election. Well I am disappointed with the overall turnout. I'm pleased that in the Rhonda it is actually higher than in uh, many other constituencies. What I said in my uh, acceptance speech tonight was that I think the Assembly needs to learn to reconnect with the ordinary people of Wales. It needs to demonstrate uh, from day one of the new assembly that it is delivering on issues like public services, for example. But I think this is a challenge for all of us as politicians in the assembly. We all have to demonstrate, once again, the relevance of the assembly to people's lives. What's going to be on top of the agenda for Leighton Andrews in the assembly? Um, well, I've got a whole series of issues that I want to follow up relating to investment uh, in the Rhonda, the new hospital in the Rhonda that we're getting, uh, the new relief road we're getting here in the Rhonda Vach. Uh, and the investments that we're going to be making uh, in health and education, those are going to be top of my priorities. Leighton Andrews, thank you and congratulations again. Thank you. Okay, we're getting some pictures in uh, now of uh, the scene in Llanetli. Uh, Labour looking very, very happy there. You can see hugs and kisses. Of course, there was a recount. It went to a knife edge 
uh, Labour hoping to wrestle the seat uh, from Plaid. I wonder what the plan panel make of, of all that, Joe. John, thank you. Yes, uh, jubilant scenes there. Presumably, uh, you're on course to win that. 27 seats so far. That would make 28. 28. How do you think it's going? Well, it's <laughs> Silly question. Good. It's very good for Labour. I was down in Clonethly a few days ago campaigning. We have a first-class candidate, first-class, I believe, Assembly member uh, uh, now in Catherine, and I think it is uh, we're on course at the moment for a Labour majority. A Labour majority. The seats that we've got left to declare: Clonethly, uh, Conwy, Cloyd West. Do you think you actually have any chance? of taking those We two. have good chances and we're working at it and we'll just see now when the results finally come but we're very, very close. Simon Thomas, the evening goes from bad to worse for you. Well, not quite that actually because we are seeing a slightly better results in West Wales for, for like I'm here. A good result for Ellen Jones and Kerry Digion. Um, uh, knocking back the, the Liberal Democrats who uh, thought they were going to do very well there. Roger earlier on saying they're going to win, I think. Um, uh, but a very good result once again for, for Ellen there. And um, a, 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 a it looks like we have lost the Nestle, but I understand by as little as 50 votes, and that would reflect very well on Helen Mary Jones as an Assembly member. Her work in Nestle shows that we can hold up the vote in general. I know it's you know 50 votes uh, has, has gone in that case. She'll be back, of course, on the list. Uh, I, I'm sure. But she's disappointed um, not to keep. Well, she will be hugely disappointed. Again, it was only about 600 votes in it last time. So they're, they're, you know, in, in, in the general terms of how we do in South Wales as a nation then actually the, the results we've seen from West Wales show a better result in, 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 in Carmarthen uh, West let me, as let well. Let me put your point to Roger Williams. Uh, Plaid are doing better than the Lib Dems. Well, I uh, disagree with that entirely. We've held every constituency that we held before and Plaid have obviously suffered uh, a uh, number... Many, many, Roger, well, <laughs> well, I, well, all I can say was 100%, Simon. <laughs> um, 100% <laughs> <laughs> of what we've got. And uh, we're looking forward to the list uh, results coming in because I think they could be interesting and actually this whole evening could turn on the regional list. It, because, it, that, know, that, that's where it's going to become... And, you know, it'll be interesting to see whether Labour get uh, somebody on the Mid and West Wales list, for instance. And, and of course... if they don't, that's in effect a loss to them of one seat. Yeah. We've still got a recount of course happening in, in Cardiff North. Uh, yeah. Have you anything you can tell us about that Jonathan? No I can't. Uh, well, even if I knew anything I wouldn't be allowed to tell you anything <laughs> about it. Uh, obviously we are hoping that we manage to uh, improve on the one seat that we currently hold but of course these are elections with proportional representation as Roger has said uh, we will see the allocation of the regional lists and it's very, very likely that we're going to see a significant number of those seats come into the Conservative Party. I am going to have to stop party. you there now because uh, we can go to, uh, to, we can go to Tlenetli where the declaration is about to take place. Uh, the, the podium there, uh, Labour are smiling. Uh, the result uh, to be declared any moment now. Uh, they're just organising herself. Helen Mary Jones in the orange there, rubbing her brow. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting one, isn't it? It's going to be um, deeply disappointing for Helen Mary if she doesn't, uh, as, as is predicted, she isn't going to win the seat. I think she's worked very hard. I think she's one of one of one of the better one of the better AMs. I mean, hopefully she's been she very charismatic. For you were talking about charismatic figures in the assembly. She's been one of those yes, and, charismatic and, and figures. Yes, and yes, she has, and she's a, and she's a woman, and it's good to see mm. see women in women in politics. And uh, I, I think she's been a very very good AM, a very good education spokesperson, and um, perhaps she'll, hopefully she'll get in via, via the list. She'd be a great loss, I think. Let's, uh, let's hear from the returning officers if we can. Applied Drosbob in or We can see the Labour candidate there. Uh, I, being all the constituency smiles. returning officer for the Llanetli constituency, do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate is as follows Jones, Gareth John, Welsh Conservative Party. Applied Gaidwadol, Cymru, Ian Meal, Saith Cant, a Dyddig, 1712. <laughs> Jones, Helen Mary, Plaid Cymru, the Party of Wales, Now Meal, Oith Cant, Now Dig, Pimp. 9,895. <laughs> Rhys Kenneth Denver, Welsh Liberal Democrats, Democratiad, 
Rydd Vrydol Cymru, 1,644. <laughs> Thomas Catherine Bailey, Labour Party candidate, am Gaisith Plaid Lavir, now meal, now cant, indig a quick, nine thousand nine hundred and sixteen. Ak Ak Wesley Board. Kathleen Catherine Thomas Bailey, Wedi Hethel I Wasanathi, Dros Ur Ethelith uh, Enoid, and that Catherine Thomas Bailey has been duly elected to serve for the said constituency. Good morning. U.S. President George Bush has declared major combat operations in Iraq are over 